How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive. This is part 50. Making and fitting the covers for the steam chest glands with a slight modification to the design. Before I start this episode though, I'm going to mention something about imperial drill sizes. I often routinely say things like, the tapping size for ME threads is generally two imperial sizes less than the size of the bolt. Or in this case, because I'm reaming a hole, it is one imperial size less than the hole diameter that you need. To avoid any further confusion, I've listed all of the imperial drill set sizes from 1 16th to half inch. I'll place these sizes in the header of the video in text form so you can cut and copy them wherever you like, and even print them out on a piece of paper to stick on the workshop wall. Anyway, that's cleared that up, it's on with the job. I'm using a reamer. I've slowed the lathe down, and I'm reaming this hole, which is 11 64ths of an inch in diameter, up to 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. The hole will be accurately sized and the surface finish will be good. Not only is the hole in the middle 3 16ths of an inch in diameter, the thickness of the gland cover is also going to be 3 16ths of an inch in diameter, but in this case it was a bit oversized, so I adjusted the parting tool to part off the disc to the correct size. Here I'm machining away the ridge that was left behind. The next part of the job is just the same as what you've seen. I need to end up with three discs accurately machined and all the same size. During the turning and parting off procedure I use some emery cloth to just take the sharp edge off. Here I'm using the first disc to set the position of the parting tool to make the next one. This makes sure that all three discs are the same thickness. Here's the parting off procedure for the third disc. The question is, why did I make three of these discs when clearly there are only two valve chests and two glands and I only need two of these gland covers? The reason is quite simple and fairly logical. I'm going to use the first disc as a drilling jig to drill the other two. And here are the two accurately machined gland covers sat on the valve rod and all is well. Here's the third one, and what I'm going to do is use the pattern that I made to drill holes in this in the right place. I thought about it and decided not to make a gland cover to bolt into the existing holes because they are terrible and they're not in the right place, and besides, they're not even threaded in the first place. I did use the piece of mahogany that I printed from the actual valve chest as a guide, but I made some corrections, so this time with a bit of luck the holes will be in the right place. I bolted together all three of the discs, using a 2BA bolt and a matching 2BA nut, and the entire sandwich of the three parts is held in the machine vise by the nut, and now it's time to drill all the way through very carefully positioning the drill bit into the hole before turning on the power. This was a very simple job. The general rule though is clear the chippings frequently and take your time. I use a floor mounted drilling machine and it's not very rigid and it moves about, that's why the image is shaky. Not only does the column move, but the head moves as well. That's a good thing because as all the parts move together, the holes are accurately drilled in the parts. As I was removing the assembly from the drilling machine, I suddenly noticed where the tin of 3-in-1 oil was. I applied some of this to the whetstone in order to clean up the parts. It's quite important that these components are flat, because they're going to be holding an o-ring into a recess, and I'm not convinced this is going to work, but anyway, I'll go along with it for the moment. These outer gland covers are held to the main gland on the steam chest using 8BA bolts. Mine are just flat and quite different to the ones shown on the drawing, but I never did like them. This may seem to be a very strange thing to do. I'm not going to use these original holes, but I threaded them anyway using an 8BA tap, just to get the feel of the tap. What I actually did was use a piece of 316 stainless steel to hold everything together and drill a hole down into the cast iron. 
Then the first thing I did was thread the hole in the cast iron and put a bolt in place. And that makes sure that all the other fixings are in the right place relative to the first one. This is a job that even my calibrated eye can't quite cope with. As you can see by the clip, I'm frequently withdrawing the twist drill because I don't want it to snap off in the hole. That would not be good at this stage. After the drilling job, I threaded the holes in the cast iron with the part in place to use it as a tap guide. And here, without any problems at all, I'm screwing in three 8BA machine screws. This is the other steam chest cover. The three original holes that I didn't use aren't threaded. And to be honest, on the other steam chest gland, I actually threaded the original holes, even though they're in the wrong place. Then I plugged them with 8BA bolts and snapped them off and cleaned up the face. It's impossible to get it wrong, because the three holes that are in the wrong place are not threaded. Here with the valve rod in place, I'm fitting the drive block. Followed by testing the movement of the valve rods through the glands. Here's the first one. It moves very freely and travels the full distance. You can see here why I rounded the edges of the slide valve to match the curvature of the inside of the steam chest. The good news is the slide valve does not stick to the drive block and everything's looking good. Here's a before and after assembly shot. And I personally prefer the look of the glands on the steam chest to the original ones that would be fitted to a sweet pea. A bit more testing with the steam chest cover in position and everything's looking really good. If these O-ring type steam chest glands are not successful, I will convert them to use Teflon coated yarn like I did with the piston rods. But I won't know whether these glands are successful or not until I give the chassis an air test and that's quite a way off yet. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.